All right, we're back. We're back in for the second half of uh, our presentation. Uh, again, we're at the uh, Quran study uh, group. This segment is called the workshop. It's not our annual conference that we have. It's a special segment that we uh, agreed to come visit in Maryland and to uh, engage in this particular pursuit of, uh, of studying, uh, trying to understand uh, broader and more uh, uh, sturdy uh, concept of the application of uh, the Hudan, the guidance that we get from the Quran, the Quran alone. This is what we're looking at, and we want to rule out the possibility of any second source material. And so in part one, we began that journey, and now we want to continue. So yeah. let's continue, and the heading on this first uh, opening uh, document is called These Two Books. These Two Books. These Two Books. Now, <clears throat> we're talking about in chapter 3529, the Book of Allah. The Book of Allah. And if you read it later on, you read it in context, it's going to be uh, chapter 39, verses 15 to 32 in context. Right now, I'm concerned basically with verse 29. Shafiq, would you want to read that? Surely those who recite the Book of Allah and keep a prayer and spend out of what we have given them secretly and openly hope for a gain which perishes not. Solely those who recite what? Kitab Allah. Kitab Allah. And they Akimus Salah. And they spin out of what we have given them. I'm leaving that Akimus Salah uh, purposely untranslated because I intend to do work on that subject again shortly, inshallah, uh, on this uh, Salah idea. We want to go back at that and uh, see if we can't uh, get that a little clearer for ourselves and others so now those who recite the the, the kitab Allah so here Allah is named this al-kitab kitab Allah the book of Allah so let's take a look in chapter 46 verse 12 what does it say Forty-six, twelve. And before it was the book of Moses, a guide and a mercy. And this is a book verifying it in the Arabic language, that it may warn those who do wrong and as good news for the doers of good. Okay, so here Allah gives the book, Al-Kitab, another name. Kitab al-Musa. Kitab al-Musa. Now, we don't see in the Quran Kitab al-Muhammad. Kitab of Esau, Kitab of um, uh, uh, Daoud, anyone. It says Kitab of Law. It says Kitab of Musa. So I'm saying these two books. This is what I'm talking about. These two books. Now it said that this book of Musa, Kitab of Musa, <clears throat> was a guide. The word guide there is not Hudan. The word guide there is Imamen. It's imamin, imamin, imamin. And we're going to find that word again in chapter 2, verse 124. What does it say? 2, 124. We're going to find that word imamin again. So the book was a guide, the book. Kitab al-Musa was imamin. And when his Lord tried Abraham with certain words, he fulfilled them. He said, surely I will make thee a leader of men. Abraham said, and of my offspring? The response was, my, my covenant does not include the wrongdoers. Look at that. I'm going to make you a leader of men. What is the word there? Imamin. I'm going to make you imamin. So now the book of Moses was imamin. 
Oh, Abraham was going to make be made imam. Well, look about the twenty. Let's take a look at twenty five uh, seventy four. <clears throat> what about us? Twenty five seventy four. And they say, our Lord, grant us in our wives and our offspring a joy of our eyes and make us leaders for those who guard against evil. Make us imam. Isn't that something? The book of Moses is a leader, a guide, a leader in that sense, an imam. Abraham was made a guide or a leader Imamin. And now Allah asks, we ask Allah to make us Imamin for our families and so forth. Imamin. So, what, this is what we have in common with the revelation. That by the revelation being the Imam and we adhere into it, Abraham number one, the revelation ad advocates the first thing is total, absolute monotheism and allegiance to Allah alone. Abraham said that when we look at his arguments and what he said, Allah, what the who alone and all of that. And now we follow in all of that information that came to us. We want to be structures in our family to advocate monotheism Establish monotheism in our families. You follow me? Now I got a sidebar here on that note uh, because we're talking about these two books, chapter six, uh, chapter six, verses ninety-one to ninety-three. In context, it's eighty-four to ninety-three, but I'm interested in these three verses. What does it say? And they honor not Allah with the honor due to Him when they say Allah has not recited anything to a mortal, say, who revealed the book which Moses brought, a light and a guidance to men. You make it into scattered pages, which you show and you conceal much, and you are taught that which neither you nor your fathers knew. Say, Allah, Allah, then lead them sporting in their idle talk. And this is a blessed book we have revealed, verifying that which is before it, and that thou mayest warn the mother of the towns and those around her, and those who believe in the hereafter, believe in it, and they keep watch over their prayers. There we go. So now, uh, who set down the book which Moses brought? We said before it was the Kitab of Musa. It was Imamin. Allah says translate that into what a light, a light, and who dan for the people. It, it, it was a light and who dan for the people, single source. And so this is what we advocate, the light and the guidance from the source of Allah, the Kitab Allah, and we have to point to the book of Allah, I mean the book of Moses, because before we talked about 581, had you believed in Moses and you would have came over into this, we're going to now see what more is important about these two books, the Book of Moses, Kitab al Musa, and uh, Kitab al Law. Now, uh, question which book should we believe in? Which book should we believe in? Chapter 2, verse 285. What does it say? Chapter 2, verse 285. The messenger believes in what has been revealed to him from his Lord, and so do the believers. They all believe in Allah and his angels and his books and his messengers. We make no difference between any of his messengers. They say, we hear and obey. Our Lord, thy, thy protection do we crave, and to thee is the eventual cause. Good, so we dealt with that before, and so the messenger believes in that which is unzilah to him, and 
everybody else. Now, what about chapter 2, verse 213? Chapter 2, verse 213. Mankind is a single nation. So Allah raised prophets as bearers of good news and warnings. And he revealed to them the book with truth that it might judge between people concerning in which they differ, that in which they differ. Mm -hmm. And none but the very people who were given it differed about it after clear arguments had become clear to them, envying one another. So Allah guided by his will those who believe to the truth about which they differ, and Allah guides whom he pleases to the right path. Good. So now we're talking about Mankind was given the book, a single book, and that, and they only differed after they got knowledge and became sectarians. And each one wanted to have their own little thing, and so they added on stuff like Hadith and Sunnah as a, for the Muslims, and the uh, uh, the uh, Mishnah and the Talmud and all that for the Jews, and who knows whatever else the Christians added on the. Uh, uh, epistles of Paul and one thing after the other and so they just added on, added on and becoming sectarians, sectarians and each one rejoicing and that was with, with them. So now the next question is which book did the messenger follow? Which book did the messenger follow? And us. Which book did he follow and which did we follow? And us. Chapter 7 verse 2. Chapter 7 verse 2. What does it say? A book revealed to thee, so let not, so let there be no straightness in thy heart, in mm -hmm. thy breast concerning it, that thou mayest warn with it and a reminder to the believers. Look at that. So here Allah is talking about a book that was what? That was Unzila. Is that the word there? Yes. Um, a book that was unzila to thee, to the prophet. I mean, to the messenger, yeah, the messenger prophet. Um, uh, a book that was unzila to thee. So don't let there be any uh, uh, straightness in your, in your heart because of uh, straightness in, in your breast. Uh, concerning it and that thou may warn thereby you warn thereby by what was unzila to you you warn thereby that now there's the word unzila we know that's in chapter 2 verse 285 that's the Quran but we have another word uhiya in chapter 6 verse 19 and Allah says um, the messenger calls Allah to bear witness that with this Quran I may warn you, warn you, Unzila, and whomever it reaches forevermore. So now we have the Quran has been Unzila uh, and Allah to bear witness to it. That's to the messenger. What about to us? What about to us? The next verse, 7 3. What does it say? Follow that which has been Unzila to you from your Lord, and follow not besides him any god, guardians, little it is that you mind. So now, now the messenger and us are included in the unzila. You see, first it was told of the messenger, follow what is unzila to thee, and don't let no be, be no problem with you concerning it. Now for him and us, follow what is unzila to us. You see, follow it. Follow it. And don't follow no nothing else, you see. Follow not besides him any guardians besides the law. Don't follow any guardians. Don't follow no autobabs. Don't follow no second sources material. But first, but first, the Ten Commandments. Chapter 6, verse 151 To 156. I mean 155 to 156. 6, 155 to 156. 
What does it say? Huh? 151 to 156? 6, 155, is it? To 156. Yeah. And this is a book we have revealed, full of blessings. So follow it and keep your duty that mercy may be shown to you. Lest you should say that the book was revealed only to two parties before us, and we were truly unaware of what they read. <laughs> No, I think you should have read the verse before it also. What does it say? Again, we gave the book. 154. Yeah, is that what it is? Yeah. What does it say? It says, and again. Okay, good, because because in mine, the numbers change. So I wanted to start it, start there. Start, start there. Start, start, start there. there. Yeah. Again, we gave the book to Moses to complete our blessings on him, who would do good and make it plain all things and a guidance and a mercy so that they might believe in the meetings with their Lord. Look at that now, look. Again, Allah said, we gave the book to Moses. To what? Complete, complete on him who would do good. We ended our favor with him. What was it? It made plain all things. The book that we gave to Moses made plain all things. And what was it? It was a guidance and a mercy so they, that they might believe in the meeting with their Lord. They would be held accountable. They would believe in accountability. You see, no second source. No second source. Now the next verse said, And this is a book we have revealed, full of blessings. So follow it. Follow it. And keep your duty that mercy may be shown to you. Look, so now this is a blessed book we reveal. Follow it. You see, follow it. Don't follow the book of Moses. Follow it. What we gave Moses was a blessing and so forth for his people. But this book came after that, confirming that. Follow it. It's full of blessings. Absolutely no second source. Chapter 28, verses 43 to 57. But I want verse 49. Chapter 28, verse 43 to 57. For the context, absolutely no second source. But I want to quote. Chapter 4, verse 49. What does it say? Because we're talking about these two books. We showed the attributes of the two books. The book, one called Kitab of Musa. Can't get better than that. Allah gave the book uh, uh, Moses' name, Kitab of Musa. And he gave, and that book is in his book, which is Kitab of Law. So all of that's concluded. The law says we get this is the best of all that was revealed. So now, absolutely no second source. Absolutely, absolutely no second source. Chapter twenty-eight, verse forty-nine. What does it say? Say then, bring some other book from a law which is better, a better guide than these two books, and I will follow it if you are truthful. Look at that. So say. Don't bring me the Quran and something like it. Don't bring me the Quran and something like it. Like our Sunni brothers say that the messenger was given the Quran and something like it. Mithlihi. Mithlihi. Something like it. No, we don't want the Quran and something like it. We want, if you have to give us a second source, it must be better than the Quran. It must be better. So it says, say, bring me some other book from Allah which is better, a better guide than these two books, then in that case, I will follow it. If you are truthful, if it's better, better, you know what better is? It's not the same. If it's the same, we don't care. We don't need it. It's the same as this. Excuse me. I got one already. I got the same thing. You know, I want to sell, I'm selling this one. It's cheap. How much you want for $200? I'll pay three. Well, I got one like it. My kids got it for, for the, in the birthday. I don't need to buy that one. I got one just like it. Does it do, do, do anything? Not the same, identical. As a matter of fact, you always got scratches and stuff on it. Well, you just dropped it already. I wouldn't, I'm not going to buy that. Now, if you got something better, you know, they got the new uh, upgrade 15, the you know, iPhone 15, you know, and I got the iPhone 7 still. Uh, I'll, I'll buy that one for a couple hundred dollars. So it has to be better. Now, if you claim the prophet has a second source, it's better than the Quran. 
is better than the Quran. Not mythi, not to uh, like it. It must be better, or, and I'll follow it. If it's not better, I'm not following anything after the Quran. That's what the messenger said. If, and you ain't got nothing better. Allah says if they answer you not and they won't be able to do that, they're liars. So you see how now the second source is ruled out. No hadith, no sunnah is gone. Some of that. Bingo. Gone. Let's try another one. Atiyah Allah wa atiyah Rasul. We hear that all the time. Obey Allah and obey the messenger. Obey Allah and obey the messenger. Chapter 4, verse 59. Chapter 4, verse 59. What does it say? Verse 59. Oh, you believe. Obey Allah and obey the messenger and those in authority from among you. Then if, if you quarrel about anything, refer to Allah and his messenger if you believe in Allah in the last day. This is best and more suitable to achieve the end. Look at that. Oh, you believe, obey Allah, Ati Allah, there it is right there, Ati Allah, and obey the messenger, Ati Rasul, and those in authority among you. If you quarrel about what? Anything. Refer to who? Allah and his messenger, if you believe in Allah in the last day, if you feel that you're going to be held accountable. This is what belief in Allah and, and last day uh, uh, implies, that you feel and you know that you will be held accountable, and so therefore you're not going to take this lightly. This is best and more suitable to achieve the end. Now, right there, I can stop and say, excuse me, you Sunnis like to quote that as the standard uh, for the necessity of a second source authority. I just have one question for you. I have one question. Was the messenger included? Was the prophet included? Was the messenger included? Was he to obey Allah and obey the messenger? Was the prophet included? Was the messenger included? Was he included? Chapter 81, verses 19 to 21. I say yes, he was. He was included. Chapter 81, verses 19 to 21. Obey Allah and obey the messenger. Muhammad was included. He had to do that too. Surely it is the speech of a bountiful messenger, the possessor of strength, established in the presence of the Lord of the throne, one to be obeyed and faithful. And your companion is not mad. He truly saw himself on the clear horizon, nor is he nigg niggardly of the unseen. So, surely it is the speech of a bountiful messenger, Rasul and Kareem, of a Rasul and Kareem. Uh, the speech of a bountiful messenger. Well, whose speech is that? One possessed of strength, established in the presence of the Lord of the throne. Now, you want to say that's the Prophet Muhammad? That he's established in the presence of the Lord of the throne? Is that him? It says, one to be obeyed and faithful. One to be obeyed and faithful. So did the, now, now I would say, well, okay, real quick, let's hop over to chapter 2, verse 97, see what it says. Say, whoever is an enemy to Gabriel, for surely he revealed it to thy heart by Allah's command, verifying that which is before it, and a guidance and glad tidings for the believers. Good. So now we know that Jibril uh, is the one who 
revealed it, brought it down upon the heart of the messenger, upon his heart. And so when it was brought down on his heart, included in there was some uh, words that said, Ikora Bismi Rabbi Kala the Kalak. Now they translate it as read or recite in the name of thy Lord who cre creates. So when that was heard by the prophet, by Muhammad, by the messenger, was he to obey that? Yes. And who brought it down? Jibril brought it down. And so in these verses over here, 81, 19 to 21, it says, surely it is the speech of a bountiful messenger. It's not the word of the messenger. It's the speech because the messenger is speaking the words of God to someone else. And when Muhammad gets it, he's speaking the word of God to the people. When we get it, we're speaking the word of God. It's not what our Sunni brothers say, that uh, the Quran is the best speech and the best guidance is, uh, is the guidance of Muhammad. No, it's not that. So surely it's the speech of a bountiful messenger, one possesses of strength, established in the presence of that Lord, the Lord of the throne, one to be obeyed and faithful. Well, let's continue on. Now, so... Who uh, obey Allah and obey the messenger. And if you differ, refer to Allah and his messenger. So I have to ask this same kind of question now that we were asking in part one. Who is the first reciter of the Quran? Who is the first reciter of the Quran? Anybody? Allah. 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 That's what you said, right? Who's the reciter of the Quran? Yeah, who recited it first? Huh? Allah? I agree. Allah re recited the Quran first. Who else could possibly be the first person to ever recite the Quran? What, Jibril? Then it's his. It's from him. Uh, we can ask the sister, is that, is that correct? Is it from him? Okay, so Allah calls himself the first reciter of the Quran. Chapter 75, verses 16 to 19. Chapter 75, verse 16 to 19. We went through that earlier before. What does it say? Move not thy tongue therewith to make haste with it. Surely on us rest the collecting of it. And the reciting of it. Well, Carter Anna, who? Reciting it. We, we are the first reciter of the Quran. The reciter of the Quran. So what? So when we recite it, follow its recitation. And again on us, rest the explaining of it. Now, right away, we know that Allah didn't recite it directly to Muhammad, did he? Huh? He recited it through what? A messenger. Right? How do we know that? By chapter 42, verse 50, uh, 52. Allah talks about three ways that he speaks to a mortal. One by wahi, one by behind a hijab, and one by what? Sending a messenger and reciting what Allah would have him uh, recite. You follow me? So now Allah recited first, and he recited it via the messenger who brought it to Muhammad. Muhammad was to obey Allah by obeying the messenger. Is that clear? Huh? Allah was, uh, Muhammad was to obey Allah. He's the first reciter of the Quran. And Allah sent the messenger with that recital to Muhammad to recite it to him. And he was a messenger, one established in the presence of our Lord, one to be obeyed. And so uh, uh, he had to obey him. So when it says obey Allah and obey the messenger, Muhammad is included. He's included. Now, let's take a look at chapter 80, 87, verse 67.
87, 67. And, and we shall make thee recite so that thou shalt not forget, except what Allah pleases. Look at that. Surely he knows the manifest and the hidden. Look at that. So Allah says, he recited the Quran. When he recites it, you listen, you do the dust. Now we're going to make you also recite so that you don't forget. So that you don't forget. Now that opens up a whole nother can of worms because they talk about uh, the shaitanic verses, satanic verses, and that the messenger forgot this or he forgot that, or shaitan intervened and whispered something to the messenger and he re recited it and the law came and nullified it and all of that which we know is a law, is a lie, rather. Allah said, we'll make you recite so that you don't forget. You won't forget. You won't make no mistakes. And Allah says, he comes between a man and his kulub, a man and his kulub. And we know that the Quran was re-downloaded on the kulub of the prophet. So if Allah comes between a man and his kulub, you think shaitan can get in to whisper something? to whisper something to the kulub of the messenger so that it becomes some shaitanic verse in the law they'll annul it. He can get by a law. Where's the law? Well, he's between uh, me and Muhammad. But right now he's taking a nap. He's taking a nap. So slide by and whisper something. It doesn't go like that. It doesn't go like that. It sounds foolish and it sounds like blasphemy, but that's what you're saying. That's what you're suggesting when you think that something was recited to the messenger and Allah had to nullify it, that shaitan whispered. As a matter of fact, it said that shaitan whispers to the sudur of man, not the kulub. The Quran is downloaded on the kulub. Shaitan doesn't whisper to the kulub. He whispers to the sudur, which is the next topic, inshallah, when I sit down to, to uh, discuss is going to be the topic of the intelligent heart. Mm. The intelligent heart. And we're going to show that all that mess that you talk is some foolishness. And we're going to show the wisdom of the Quran by the heart and the choice that Allah downloaded the Quran on the heart and not the akal or the fu'ad or the sudur or any of those situations. We're going to show that. Now, chapter 27, verses 91 to 92. Here we're talking about obey Allah and obey the messenger. 27, 91 to 92. The prophet had to obey Allah and he had to obey the, the messenger. I am commanded only to serve the Lord of this city who has made it sacred. And his are all things. And I am commanded to be of those who submit and to recite the Quran. So whoever goes aright, he goes aright for his own soul. And whoever goes astray, say, I am only one of the warners. There you go. I'm commanded to recite the Quran. I'm not commanded to recite anything else. I'm commanded to recite the Quran. So whoever goes aright as a result of the Quran, he goes aright for his own soul. And whoever goes astray, I'm only one of the warners, that's all. So once you go astray, I warn you of a painful chastisement. I warn you of a painful chastisement. Now, there's something in prison called G-pop. G-pop. Samir, you know about that very well. G-pop, you don't know? General population. Okay, you young, <laughs> young dude. Yeah, G pop. <laughs> All right, look. So, look, we want to talk about the general population. That's us. <laughs> I forgot. You know, too. And we all know. 3529. G pop, the general population. Thirty-five, twenty-nine. Surely those who recite the book of Allah and keep a prayer and spend out of what we have given them, 
secretly and openly, hope for gain, which will perish not. Which look, perishes not. Look at that. Surely those who recite the Kitabul Law. You see, we talked about, about before the Kitabul Musa, the Kitabul Law. Allah says about that Kitabul Law, it is a blessed book. Follow it. Allah says about the Kitabul Law, it was sent down in Ramadan, Hudan, and clear proofs of Al Huda. Allah talks about the Quran, the Quran, the Quran, all of its attributes of perfection, and one thing after the other. Follow it. Follow it. So, in order to follow it, the messenger was to follow it. And in order to do that, he had to obey Allah and he had to obey the messenger who brought the message. Is that clear? So when we talk about, now look, we could have took this somewhere else. We could have took this Atiyah Allah Rasul somewhere else. 459. 459, and Shafiq knows well what I'm getting ready to say. 459, we could have said 59.4. Just flip, flip, the, flip the words around. Instead of 459, 59.4. What does it say? Just works out. That is because they who opposed, they were opposed to Allah and his, and his messenger. They were opposed to Allah and his messenger, right? So you think that's so two separate and distinct uh, entities in this case. They were opposed to Allah. How was that? How was that? Well, we'll talk about that later. How, well, they, they were opposed to his messenger. Yeah, because they did so and so and so and so. You want to talk about him. Allah put him on hold, how they were opposed to him. Uh, but let's talk about how they were opposed to his messenger. So what does it say? It says, and whoever oppo is opposed to Allah, surely Allah is severe in retribution. So now Allah took the messenger out of the picture. Whoever's opposed to Allah, that's what it is. We don't care about the messenger. Because the messenger is a law, it's the same thing. So Allah took him out of it. You don't have to worry about obey Allah and obey the messenger. It's two separate and distinct. What about that, uh, brother? June 8. You like that, right? I saw the smile. I saw you light up. <laughs> <laughs> you see how Allah took him out of the picture? Took him out of the picture. Now, I know you Sunnis, you don't like that. But it is what it is. Oh, well, let's see how Allah takes him out of the picture again. Chapter 8, verse 20. Let's see how he takes him out of the picture again. We could have went that route. We went the route that we did. It's recorded. But we could have went this route. Very simple. Oh, you who believe. Obey Allah and his messenger. Look at that. Obey Allah and his messenger. So you think that that's two separate and distinct obedience. What does it say? And turn not away from him. From him. Here. So that means now... If it's two separate and distinct, well, then one of them you shouldn't turn away from. The other one is okay. Turn away from him. But one of them you shouldn't. And turn not away from him. Obey Allah and obey his messenger. And turn not away. Obey Allah and obey the messenger. And turn not away from him. So those two equals one. Those two equal one. And just so happened I found something uh, to demonstrate that. You remember I did my little, you know, when I was debating this guy called Bill Lockwood, I said it the other day. He said Mr. Mallet did his little bird, his little bird uh, uh, thing. He, he didn't like to see it when I said the Holy Ghost descended in the form of a dove. And he says he did his little bird thing and then he got popped off with that in that lecture because he didn't know that the Holy Ghost had incarnated and descended like a dove. And I was making the case for two separate and distinct incarnations. And so that was made clear. So let me just do that. I did that with the stop sign when I brought out the stop sign. And I said, the guy's holding the stop sign and we need him because they're doing construction work. I said, but after they finished the construction work and all that, they planted the stop sign there and the guy went away. We don't need him anymore because you got the message. The message is there. We don't need the guy to hold it anymore. So we got rid of him. So now the other day, I was just looking around in a little gift shop, and I saw these two things, and I said, hmm. 
So I, I, I put them together like this here. Oh, I got them backwards. I put them together like this here. One, like one. Obey Allah and obey the messenger. So that would be what you say is two separate and distinct obediences. But it says turn that away from him. Turn that away from him. Why you know? So I just threw one away. So who is this? I'm throwing away Allah? I'm I throwing away the messenger. Who am I getting rid of? Because I'm left with just one. I started with two, what you say. What you say. I'm saying no, the two is one here. I'm saying these two are one. But you're saying no, brother, they're separate. You wanted to make them separate and distinct. I said, well, then we got to throw away one of them. Which one you want to get rid of? If you get rid of the messenger, how are you going to get the message? If you get rid of the Allah, how are you going to get the message? You see? So you need Allah and the messenger, which is the message. So these two are one. You see? It sounds like our friends over there who say these three are one. You see? So here we go. These two are one. I hope that illustration uh, helps uh, a little bit uh, further. So now, Let's move on. Let's move on to something else. <clears throat> we want to eradicate all this Hadith and Sunnah stuff. This is what the whole situation is about. We're going to one topic to the other. We got into that Quran Yun, who was the first Quranist. We got into who was the first Hadith rejecter. We say both of those was the law. So when you make mockery, you're making mockery of a law. We are only following the Sunnah of Allah. And the Sunnah of Allah doesn't change, so we will never change. We will never change. And because you change, the messenger said, Oh Allah, my people change. They abandoned the Quran. They got rid of the Quran. So now this word, Amin. This is a little sidebar. The word, Amin. Because I'm, I'm also wanting to deal with what we dealt with in the uh, informal type of roundhouse discussion that we had earlier, uh, where everybody gave some concerns of this. But I didn't give mine, but here's a concern that I'll probably in, in, introduce now. A concern about Amin. Who added Amin if you say al fatiha is a surah of the Quran. I want to know who added Amin to it. Because every time you recite it, you recite Amin. Amin. So if it's a surah, who added the Amin? And should Amin be recited as a closure to? what I consider to be a dua. A dua, because normally when you say, oh, brother, you know, I hope Allah be merciful for you and heal your 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 problems, solve your problems for you. You say, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, Rob. I mean, I mean, I mean. You know, sometimes people say it to me and I don't say I mean. I guess they say, well, what the hell's wrong with this guy? I said a dua and he just said, I mean. And I'm saying to myself, Boy, I know you mad because I didn't say Amin. So should we say Amin? Chapter 22, verses 30. 29 to 30. Chapter 22, verse 29 to 30. Who added Amin to the Fatiha? If there's going to be anything, what should it be? If. And let them accomplish their needful acts. Look at the verse before that. Oh, no. Okay, that's good. I'm sorry. You're right. Then let them accomplish their needful acts of cleansing and let them fulfill their vows and go around the ancient house. That shall be so. Look at that. That's it. That's the end of the full stop. That statement there is a full stop. It's just one word. That's not part of 29. That's verse 30. Verse 30 is just one word. What does it say? Valak. shall be so. Valak. Yeah. Valak. In other words, that's like saying, instead of saying I mean, 
you say valak. Whatever you say, that should be so. Let it be so. Let it happen. Valak. That's what the law says. To that statement, it says, let them who accomplish their needful deeds, their acts of cleansing, and let them fulfill their vows and go around the ancient house, that shall be so. Valak. One word. Valak. Not I mean. Oh, let's try another one. 22, 31 to 32. Being upright for Allah and not associating aught with him. And whoever associates aught with Allah, it is as if he had fallen from on high. Then birds snatched him away or wind had carried him off to a distant place. Stop. That's not the end of that verse, right? No. That's the end of that verse. That would be so. No, the no, the end oh, of yes. that's the end of thirty one, right? Yes. Are you all right? Yes. So now the next verse is thirty two. What does it say? That shall be so. One word. What is the word? Valak. That's one word. That's all the verse says. The next verse is just one word. Valak. Whatever was said there, Allah says valak. Instead of saying amin. If He had revealed the fatiha. And closed off, it should have been Valak after that. Not Amin. Who added Amin? Well, I'm saying Fatiha is not even a surah. So I'm just taking that out of the game anyway. I got a video on, on my YouTube channel dealing with that. But anyway, in case you don't like that, and you probably don't, you tell me who forged the word Amin in the surah, in the Quran, that you recite every day. Now you say... There were some forged verses that the goat ate part of something or Shaitan did something in the law and all that. But in this year, you're reciting it every day. I mean, who told you to put I mean there? Where'd you get that from? When the law uses the word Dalek. Oh, let's try one more place then. Chapter 22, verse 59 and 60. <clears throat> He will certainly cause them to enter a place which they are pleased with. And surely Allah is knowing forbearing. Stop. That's the end of that verse, right? Yes. Verse 60 says what? That is so. Right. That is so. That is so that what? He will certainly cause them to enter a place which they are pleased with. No doubt about that. And surely Allah is knowing forbearing. That is so. I mean, like, I mean, but not, I mean, Valak. That is so. You see that? I didn't make that up. It's right there. These are three verses that have one word after what seems to be some type of statement or dua or statement that is long for, cherished for, and the hope that it, it happens. So loss is Valak. Valak. So if you heard somebody and you felt somebody made some type of dua, oh, my son died, my aunt died, I hope Allah showed them mercy because that's where Allah can change the situation and do what he pleases in paradise. In the next life, you say valak. You say valak. Or in English, you say that will be so or that hopefully that is so. That's the case. Not I mean, you see. Now, for any dua in this life, in this life, I don't know of anything being changed in this life. Everything is fixed and it's going to be what it is. You can make duas if you want because that's your nature to do so, but things are going to work out the way they are. Okay, so that was a bone I had to pick with that. Now we have the Dalek. All of you people out there who never heard that before, you're probably shocked to amazed or you look and see wow there it is right there so one word in each one of those sentences we never seen it before we never heard it before or we did hear it before but there it is now so who put the amin in the fatiha go and ask that let's solve that problem if you don't like valid go get me figure out amin who put that in there for you to say that we know that's some pagan origin so we don't have to deal with that right now so here's another problem 
when somebody comes to you and you say, well, brother, we're following the Sunnah of Allah. Allah was a Quranist. We're following the Sunnah of Allah. Allah was a Hadith rejected. Now we can say that with security now, you see, after what we understand now today. So we're doing that. So that's kind of heavy for them. Because now let's see if they're still going to say, well, brother, how do you make a Salah? I said, I'm following the Sunnah of Allah. And he's a quarter, uh, Hadith rejecter. So I'm following his sunnah. Uh, he's a court honest. He follows, he, he adheres to only the Quran as his source, not he adheres to. He has uh, commanded that the Quran be the only source of guidance. Okay, let's take that off the table. This looks a lot of questions. I just said, brother, I follow the Quran alone. I'll take that off the table for you right now. I'll let you get caught out there trying to answer. Then I'll put that on you again later on. Well, Allah was a Quranist. Allah was a Hadith rejected. And then I slam you down. But to keep you keep that off you right now, I'll just ask you a simple question so you can go ahead and do your little one-act trick. You see, your little one-act trick. Oh, brother, uh, how do you make Salah? So my question would be, who can best define it, Salah, and its purpose? You ask me, how do you make Salah? I said, well, who can best define what Salah is, first of all? and the purpose of Salah. And then maybe I can answer you how I do it. Can you tell me who can best define it? You're asking the question, do you know the definition of Salah and how to do it? Who can best tell you that? Because you're saying Allah doesn't tell you. Well, tell me who best told you and how to do it. So let's take a look. Chapter 75, verse 31 to 2. 32. Just answer that. Who can best define define what is the law? Here's the definition coming up here now, and we're going to find out how to do it. 75, 31, 32. Go ahead. So he accepted not the truth, nor prayed, but he denied and turned back. Look at that. He accepted not the truth. The, the word there is saddaka. He didn't accept the truthful speech that came to him. But what he didn't salah either. He didn't salah. He didn't accept the truthful speech, and he didn't salah as a result of truthful speech. But what he kadhaba, he called it a lie, and to wallah, and he turned away. The truth that came from him, the truthful speech, he didn't accept it, and he didn't do the salah as regarding the truthful speech. But what? He called it a lie, and he told one lie, and he turned away. Now, we showed how that happened with, with Pharaoh in chapter 20, verse 47, 48, and so forth. We showed that. And let's take a look at it again real quick. So go you to him, chapter 20, verse 47 to 48, Moses and Aaron. So go you to him and say, Surely we are two messengers of thy Lord. Indeed, we have brought to thee a message from thy Lord, and peace be upon him who follows al Huda? It has been in, uh, revealed to us, Uhiya, to us, that if punishment will overtake him, who what? Kathaba wa tawalla. Who kathaba wa tawalla regarding al Huda. So Salah has to be connected to al Huda. Salah has to be al Huda, the guidance. So the guidance has to be the Quran. So the Salah has to be allegiance, adherence, turning towards following the Quran alone. Simple as that. We're going to deal with that more later on. This is just something for you now to chew on right now until we get the meal ready. Somebody said the other day, well, look, um, uh, you know, I know you're cooking and you're making all this uh, um, nice basmati rice and uh, biryani and so forth and you got these samosa steaming up but can't you just bring out a little snack right now because of the, you know eat no breakfast or nothing so i'm giving you this little snack to chew on right now you see and chew on right now until we get the main course ready for you now chapter 64 verses 5 to 6 
You see, who's the best one to explain what Salah is and how to perform it, how to do it. You see, how to establish it. And this is a big word that's missing because most people say, brother, how do you make Salah? There's nothing in the Quran called make Salah. The word is akimi or akimu Salah from the word to establish. That means once you do it, you don't stop because the purpose of it is to prevent Hawashish and Munkar, shameful and evil deeds. Once you stop, you're open for shameful and evil deeds. You see? So it has to be in, the pla in place and never stop. You see? You don't tawadla from it. But anyway, let's not jump the gun too fast. Let's look at 64, 5 to 6. What does it say? Has there not come to you the story of those who disbelieved before? Then tasted the evil consequences of their conduct? And they had a painful chastisement. That is because there came to them their messengers with clear arguments. But they said, shall mortals guide us? So they disbelieved and turned away. And Allah is above all need. And Allah is self-sufficient. Praise. Look at that. Look at that. Here's the not come to them, the story, the hadith, the, uh, the story of, uh, of those who believed before them. They tasted evil consequences of their conduct because they disbelieved and all that. So they had to be punished for that. And they had a painful chastisement. Dalika bi who I think that's the term there. That is because, that is because what? They came to them, what? Their messengers with clear arguments. The messengers came with clear arguments. But they said, shall mortals guide us? So they disbelieved. And they what? To Allah, they turned away. They turned away. And so now Allah has changed the word uh, from kathaba, that they gave it to Allah, to kafaru. You see? They became kafirs. And then they to Allah, you see? They to Allah, you see? So all of that alludes to chapter 40, verse 12, where when Allah Wata who is mentioned, that means Allah with his message alone and all that comes to them, they kafaru, they become kafa. You see, and when others are mentioned, they uh, like that and they become uh, believers. So Allah is above need and Allah is self-sufficient praise. We say Allah is above need. He doesn't need any help. He doesn't need anything. What He doesn't need nothing. 88, 21 to 24. What does it say? 88, 21 to 24. Nay, when the earth is made to crumble to pieces, and thy Lord comes with angels, ranks on ranks, and hell is made to appear that day. On that day, man will be mindful of what he used to bring, what he used what use will being mindful be then? He will say, oh, would that I had sent before this my life. But what? none can punish as he will punish on that day. And none can bind as he will bind on that day. O oh, soul that art at rest, return to thy Lord. What are you reading? 88, 21 to 24? No, I'm sorry. Sorry. I'll let you go on because I wasn't sure even when I got here. I'm, sure. I'm like confused. I'm yeah, and I'm saying like, wow, what did I do here? I must have been asleep on this. I'm reading with such authority. Too. Right. No no problem. I was saying, well, look, maybe it's making sense. Maybe I got the wrong thing here. <laughs> 21 to 24. So remind. Oh, there we go. Thou art only one to remind. What? Thou what? Thou art only one to remind. In the mind. That's what you are. Remind, you only want to remind. Remind. What's the next verse? Thou art not of water over them. You, ain't got the, you don't stand over them and point out to them and curse them. If they didn't come make Salah, I'll burn their house down. You know that if they don't, those who don't get up for Fajr and come, I'll burn their house down. You know, or some other foolishness. I'll whip him with this here. If he don't make Salah, stone him. Tell them three times. If you don't do this, if you don't that. 
No, you're not a water over them. Just remind, remind. Next verse. But whoever turns back and disbelieves. Uh-uh, whoever to wala and kafir, kafir, become a kafir. Allah will chastise him with the greatest chastisement. Look at that, El Kabir, El Akbar, rather, El Akbar. The word that you refuse to use for Allah, you want to call Allahu Akbar. When you, if you want to do that, you should be calling him Allahu Al Akbar, because this is the greatest Al Akbar. You won't even call Allah Al Akbar. You call him Allahu Akbar. <laughs> When he's neither of any of that, he's Al Kabir. So you're just so silly and stupid that you don't even pay attention to the Quran. Every day you make this Allah and you say, Allahu Akbar. So, Allahu Akbar, brother, that's who Allah is, Akbar to you? Well, my God is bigger than that. He's Al Akbar. He's Al Akbar. That's bigger than yours. It's comparison in the superlative term. You see? He's Allah. He's had a definite, definite article. You won't even say that about Allah. You're so silly. When none of that is right, Allah calls himself al Kabir. So anyway, let's move on. Now, what is the purpose of the Salah? 2945. Whatever Salah is, Salah, it has a purpose for humanity. What is it? 2945. And rehearse that which has been revealed to thee of the book and keep up prayer. Surely prayer keeps one away from indecency and evil. And certainly the remembrance of the law is the greatest force. And the law knows what you do. Look at that. The remembrance of the law is greatest. We just said over here, surely remind thou art only one to remind. Remind with what? Remind with the reminder. The reminder is the Quran. And remem remembrance of Allah is greater because if you don't remember Allah, you won't do what he tells you to do. If you don't remember Allah, how are you going to remember to do what he tells you to do? You know, you're too busy, tied up and other stuff. So, wow, boy, look what time it is. I forgot I, that I left the food on the stove. You see, I'm out here fooling around, standing to you in front of the house talking, and I got the thing in there, and then I smell the smoke coming out there and the thing burnt up. You see? So look, rehearse that which is revealed to you with Uhiya. That which is Uhiya. That's the Quran in chapter uh, 6, verse 19. From your Lord. And Akimu Salah. Salah. Surely the uh, Salah, the Salah, Tanha, it makes it impossible. Uh, prevents you from al-fawahish and munkar, from shameful and evil deed. That's what Salah must do. Now, that's for anybody. So let's, let's close this deal right now. Anybody who does the Quranic Salah is, is not able to do any shameful and evil deed. Which, which one? None. None. If you follow the Quranic Salah, it's impossible for you to do a shameful and evil deed. Now me, I did it for years. I did that Salah for years. I did it for years. You see, I did it right up on the Kaaba, bumping my head right up on the Kaaba, right on the stones, bumping my head right there, almost banging my head through the wall, right up on the Kaaba. So I'm there making Salah. So I know what Salah is there. Like you, I was doing it with all those millions of people that was there. But I came home and it didn't stop me from doing shameful and evil deeds. As a regular person, I did shameful and evil deeds. I did them. It didn't prevent me. This must do it for anybody Brother, you can't say, well, brother, you wasn't sincere about what you was doing and you wasn't this. No. If you follow the Quran, follow it. If I, you follow it, it must make you uh, uh, immune from shameful and evil deeds. Once you stop doing it and you claim you're not sincere, well, then you would do the shameful and evil deeds. 
But making that ritual that you do five times a day will not prevent shameful and evil deeds. That's why your tradition you told me told me that every time you wash, it re removes the sins that you gain between the last Salah. So how do you get sins between the last Salah? If, if it's supposed to prevent sins, how do you get them in every time you got to make wudu to wash them away? If that's not preventing nothing. Because you're going to make wudu. Seems like if that's the case, you ain't got to make no wudu no more. Just been one time and that's it. I ain't never doing that. I don't need wudu. But you're doing it five times a day or more. If you pass when, that must be a shameful and evil deed because you've got to go and do wudu. <laughs> huh? And that's nature and you got to go do wudu. So I'm saying, no, this Quran must do that. Now, uh, let's look at the Salah of humanity, all mankind. Chapter 23, verses 1 to 9. But now, before we do that, let's look at chapter 70, verse 22 to 35. Let's read that real quick. Verse 22 is really the one I want. 70, 22. 70, 22. But before you do that, the context for later on, if somebody wants to go look, is 22 to 35. But right now, for the sake of time, let's just read verse 22. What does Except it say? Those who pray. Except the Mussolini. See, except the Muslim. So there was some problem going on, and Allah is uh, warning about this problem that's going on, but it won't affect the Muslim. The Muslim. So these are the people of the Salah. The people of the Salah, um, the Muslim. So if I want to know what Salah is, I want to know who are the people of Salah and find out what they do, and that will tell me what Salah is, who are the Muslim. So now to find that out, we're going to take a look at chapter 23, verses 1 through 9, and we will read that into the record. Chapter 23, verses 1 to 9, who are the Muslim? What does it say? It says, Successful indeed are the believers who are humble in their prayers. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, that's the believers. And I got, so now I have to take my words back. I need to go back and read, read into the record what I said we wasn't going to read. Let's go back to 70, 22 to 35, because what I have next is the same attributes. In other words, the Mussolini and the mukminin have the same attributes. So let's take a look now and go back again and read 70, 22 to 35. What does it say? Except those who pray, who are constant in their prayers, and in whose wealth there is a known right for the beggar and the destitute, and those who accept the truth on the day of judgment, and those who are fearful of the chastisement of their Lord, Surely the chastisement of their Lord is a thing not to be felt secure from. And those who restrain their sexual passion, except in the presence of their mate or whom their right hands possess, for such are not blamed, not, not to be blamed. But he who seeks to go beyond this, these are the transgressions. And those who are faithful to their trust and their covenant, and those who are upright in their testimonies, and those who keep God on their prayer. These are in the garden, garden's honored. Look at that. The, this is referring to the Mussolini. The Mussolini. Before that, Allah talked about the damnation of mankind and pretty much except the Mussolini. The Mussolini will escape this. And Allah identifies their characteristic there. Now, they're similar to the Mu'minin. And that now is in 23, 1 to 9. Now we can read that into the record as well. Successful indeed are the believers who are humble in their prayers, who shun what is vain and act for the sake of purity, who restrain their sexual passions except in the presence of their mate or those whom their right hand possess, 
for such surely are not blamable. But whoever seeks to go beyond this, that, such are the transgressors, and those who are keepers of their trust and their covenant, and those who keep a guard on their salah. There we go. So whoever the Muslim are, they're the same characteristic as the believers, the mu'minin. Now, <clears throat> the ultimate regret. The ultimate regret. Chapter 67, verse 10. And they say, had we but listened or pondered, we should not have been among the inmates of the burning fire. Very simple process there. Now, <clears throat> chapter 74, verses 41 to 46. And we don't have to read all of that. It's chapter 40, uh, 41 to 46. I'm interested in verse 43. So let's read verse 41 to 43. And you can go get the tape and read the rest later on. 74, 41 to 46. Yeah. What has brought you into hell? Look at that. They, they will say, we were not of those who prayed. We were not of the Mussolini. Why are we going to hell? We were not of the Mussolini. We were not of the Mussolini. We showed the characteristics of the Muslim, same as the Mukminin, and they're going to hell because they weren't of that. They were of the who? The Kafirun, the Munafikin, anything less than that before. They will say, we were not of the Muslim. Now. Nor did we feed the poor, and we indulged in vain talk with the vain talkers. And we call the day of judgment a lie. Mm -hmm. Till the inevitable overtook us. So the intercession of the intercessors will not avail them. What is then the matter with them? That they turn away from the reminder. As if they were frightened asses fleeing from a lion. Mm -hmm. And every one of them desires that he should be given pages spread out. By no means. But they fear not the hereafter. Nay. It is surely a reminder, so whoever please may mind it, and they will not mind unless the law please. He is worthy that duty should be kept to him and worthy to forgive. Okay, 1959. We'll end that. What does 1959 say? 1959. But there came after them an evil generation who wasted their salah and followed lust mm. so they will meet perdition. Look at that. They wasted their salah and what? They tawala, of course. So once you turn uh, away, you at the same time turn in two. So when you turn away from something, you automatically turn towards something else. So they wasted their salah and what followed lust. They turned towards lust. And so therefore they were open to do the Fahishan moon God, you see? They, the, the, the Quran, the Al-Huda didn't prevent them. And so they were saying at hellfire, uh, woe to us, we should have been of the Muslim. Now, again, we say, they asked, how do you make Salah? How do you make Salah? Brother, how do you make Salah? I say the answer is in chapter 22, verse 68. What is the answer in 22, 68? How do you make Salah? Here's my answer in 22, 68. And if they had, and if they contend with these, say, Allah knows best. Bingo. Let's start right there. You want to contend with me, brother? I said, look, I follow only the Quran. And you want to contend with it. Well, brother, stop Allah. How do you make Salah? I say, Allahu A'lam. 
Allah knows best how I make Salah. You want to let's, let's ask Allah. You want to let's, does you believe Allah knows best? Well, let's add, appeal to Allah how I make Salah. He said, well, he doesn't give you the details. Well, why are you saying Allah knows best? Does Allah don't know best? That means he knows best about some things. Some things he don't know best about. Well, he doesn't know too much about that. You know, I mean, yeah, Allah, you know, Allah who are them, but he don't know about this. Is that what you're saying? Allah is the no cliche, everything. You say, well, he don't know about this. Well, I said he does for me. What about 658? Say, if that which you would hasten were with me, the matter would have certainly been decided between you and me. And Allah best knows the wrongdoers. Allah best knows. Allah who alam the wrongdoers. He knows the wrongdoers. You see? He knows the wrongdoers. So whatever you're following other than the Quran, he knows what you're doing. He knows that you're wrong because he told you to follow that which is uhia to you from your Lord, and turn away from the Mushri King, 6107. So now, you're getting, you know, because now, we're going to talk about this further. This Salah thing is going to be big. I'm going to talk about it. But right now, I'm saying that what Muslims are confusing is the idea of rituals and rites. A rite is different than a ritual. Although sometimes they're used interchangeable, but in the Quran it's specific, and there's no rituals in Quranic language, there could be some rites, and we know that for us those rites are not in vogue. We don't have them, uh, and we'll talk about them. We'll talk about them. If we have them, we'll point them out and talk. It's not this ritual thing that you have to do. Uh, every day call Salah, that you do it every day ritually. No. And, and we know the difference between a right, a right. Like if a person say, well, brother, you want to become Muslim, declare your submission to Allah. That's a right. That's a right that you do. You do it one time, that's it. There's not no ritual. You just every day, uh, Aslam to Li Rabbi Alami, Aslam to Li and, you know, I'm not Muslim, I died, and then I, my Islam left last night. I blew my dean. You know, they used to say that before. Your yeah, brother, you blew your dean. You know, so I have to, Islam to leave Rabbi I mean, I have to get my dean back. So now, look, chapter 22, verses 67 to 72. 22, 67 to 72. I'll read it. And he it is who brings you to life, then he causes you to die. And he will bring you to life. Surely man is ungrateful. Man is what? Man is kafirun. Surely man is ungrateful. He's kafa. He's, he's ungrateful. He wants to cover up and hide things. He wants to conceal the truth while he knows. He's ungrateful. He's a concealer. Doesn't want to let you know what the facts of the matter is. 68. To every nation we appointed acts of devotion. I'm saying rights. You see? <clears throat> huh? That twenty-two sixty sixty-seven uh, to seventy-two is not. not, not what is twenty-two sixty? Uh, sixty-seven says. To, oh, yeah, it says that there. Sixty-seven. Sixty-seven says what? Yeah, to every nation we appointed acts of devotion. Okay, so sixty-seven, right? Yeah, I'm saying your thing might be a little different than mine. So sixty-seven. To every nation we appoint an act of devotion, right? Which they observe. So let them not dispute with you. Let them not dispute with you in that matter. In other, every nation we, we, we uh, appoint an acts of devotion, you see, uh, which they observe. Don't let them dispute with you about it. Brother, how do you make the law and how do you do this and how do you do that? Surely thou art on uh, 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 guidance. Who damn Mustaqim? There you are. Sh sh you are. Don't dispute about some rights that they do. You are on Who damn Mustaqim. 
So if they say, well, brother, ain't no details for the Salah and all that, I don't care nothing about it. I'm on who Dan Mustakeen. So if the details are not for that, what you do, it got nothing to do with me. That's not who Dan Mustakeen. It's not Huda and it's not Mustakeen. If I don't find the, the, the details for what you're doing in here, it's not Huda and certainly not Mustakeen, who Dan Mustakeen. I'm on who Dan Mustakeen with this Quran. So whatever Salah is, I'm doing it in the Quran. The Quran is what I'm doing. If you go outside, you're not on who Dan was the king. So don't let them dispute with you, Allah. So don't let them dispute with you about it. Surely thou art on who Dan. Look, 68. And if they contend with you, Jadil, if they want to argue with you, say, Allah knows best. Allahu Arlam. Allahu Arlam. You ask me how do I make salah? I said, Allahu Arlam. Allah knows the best how to do it. He said, I'm on who Dan was the king. You said, well, there ain't no some thing in here, brother. They know how to do it. Well, you go get that some mess somewhere else. You are the law Mubin. Either we on who Dan, not to even mention Mustakim, or you the law Mubin. But Muhammad is on who Dan Mustakim. So if he's not, he's following the Quran, he can't be making that ritual that you do because you said it's not in the Quran. And then we argued all day long and all night that Allah was a Quranist, a Hadith rejecter. So all of this coming to bury you alive, unless you just want to die, you know, oh, that I was dust, so you can just, you know, die if you like. But if not, this is coming to bury you alive. Allah says if they contend with you, say, Allah knows that's what you do. He knows how you pray. He knows how you make the law. He knows what you do. It's got nothing to do with the Quran. 69. Allah will judge between you on the day of re resurrection, respecting that in which you differ. Allah will judge between you about what you differ. Verse 70. Knoweth thou not that Allah knows what is in the heavens and what is in the earth? Surely this is in a book that is surely easy for Allah. 71. And they serve besides Allah that for which he has sent down no authority. He sent down no authority for what you do. And of which they have no knowledge. You ain't got no knowledge about what you're doing. And for the unjust, there is no helper. Verse 72, listen to this. Verse 72. And when our clear messages are recited to them, thou will notice a denial on their faces of those who disbelieve. They almost attack those who recite our messages to them. Say, Shall I inform you of that which is worse? The fire. Allah has promised it to those who disbelieve, and evil is the result. Disbelieve, disbelieve, disbelieve. Chapter 40, verse 12. When Allah, what who is mentioned, you disbelieve. When others are mentioned, you amanu, you believe. When Allah by himself is mentioned in any capacity, you kafiru. rule. Recite all this to you. You see, because you don't think Allah is sufficient to God. You don't think everything is fully detailed, explained, and clear in the Quran. Allah said, don't let them contend with you about that. You are on who Dan was the king. Well, brother, there ain't no details for Salah in the Quran. Well, tell that to Allah. Because the messenger followed the Quran alone, and that was, he was on Mustaqim. Who Dan Mustaqim? He was on the Saralta Mustaqim. 2441. 2441. Seeth thou not that Allah is, is he to whom glorify all who are in the heavens and the earth and the birds with their wings outspread? Each one knows their Salah and its glorification of Allah is know of what they do. Even the birds know their Salah. What's wrong with you? The birds got more sense than you got. They know their Salah. The birds in flight, not only the birds, but each one. Each one knows their Salah. Each one. They know their allegiance. They know their line of duty, what they do. And these are birds with wings outspread. These are migratory birds, and we know how they migrate, and we know how they change position in order to have longevity in terms of their flight and not get tired and fatigue, uh, fatigue because they have to do transcontinental flight. 
So Allah said, if he points to the birds like that to show that. But regardless, Allah says he knows how the, the Salah is done. And the Salah, whatever it is, is fully detailed in this book. And by you following it, you are on the Sarat of Mustaqim. You are on Hudan Mustaqim case shows. You can take your other stuff somewhere else. Take that mess somewhere else. Ain't nobody got time for it over here. Now, let's get into another area. Allah's negative imperatives. Because this is what you need to learn. You are uh, hadith, uh, this Quran rejectors. You Quran rejectors. You rejectors of Allah. You are uh, rejectors of the Quran. This is what you need to learn before you get out too far out on the limb, speculating and conjecture. How easy is this? Look, Allah's negative imperative, chapter 5, verse 101, 102. O oh, you who believe, ask not about things which if made known to you would give you trouble. Don't ask about something, and then when somebody tells you, you got a problem. Well, brother, comes and look, I see your lectures. I see you doing things. I know you for a while. Uh, you say you follow only the Quran. Well, how do you make Salah? Now, you ask me a question. When I tell you, when I tell you that I make the Salah, not make, but I establish the Quranic concept of Salah, that means turning to Allah's revelation, following it closely, and preventing myself from fawahish and munkar, and therefore protecting myself uh, as a a mutaki, a person of uh, taqwa, and so therefore I'm guarding against evil. Uh, just by following the dictates of the Quran. Well, stuff a lot, brother. I mean, you know, everybody makes the salah. Now, there you go. You're in contempt of this verse. Brother, I have to hold you in contempt. You're in contempt of Allah by this verse. He told you not to ask about something that when I told you, now you don't like it. You don't like it. You don't like what I said. Well, what was the purpose of you asking me? You thought maybe I didn't know, or you was going to jam me, or you wanted to debate with me? Well, I told you what it is. And I told you, Allah, who Adam, Allah knows best how to do this law, how to tell me how to do law, how to tell me everything I know. So, oh, you believe, ask not about things which you made known to you will give you trouble. If you ask about them when the Quran is revealed, then it will be made known to you. Allah pardon you for doing that one time. He's not going to keep doing it. He pardoned you before. And Allah is pardoning, forgiving, forbearing. A people like you indeed asked us questions before you, and they became coppers. They became disbelievers. They became disbelievers. They became people who covered up the truth. Because I told you, and you said, wow, I never heard that before. I didn't, you know, well, I, well, that sounded like something, but I dare not repeat it. Because the people are going to say, oh, you've been talking to brothers over there. you one of them Qurani owners. You're a Quranist. So you cover it up. Kafir. You hide the truth. You cover it up. You see, you became Kafir. See, note, 5101. Note, 5101. What does it do? It rules out the Asbabel Nuzul. It rules out the Asbabel Nuzul. This concept of whenever something happened, Allah would send down a revelation to explain it. Something would happen, Allah send down a revelation to explain it. Something would happen, and the prophet wait, and then here comes the revelation, said, oh, what happened yesterday? Well, this is the case for that. No, this rules it out. Allah rules it out. He says, the Quranic revelation was inevitable, whether someone required the information or not. Allah says, don't ask about things, uh, that's going to give you trouble. If you ask when the Quran is revealed, the answer is going to be in the Quran. I don't care what it is. Your answer is going to be in the Quran. It ain't going to wait for you to ask some question and send it down. Well, and you can't bring a question, but we have brought you the truth and the best top seed. You already have it. You don't have to wait for no ask Babel and Zul. Get that mess out of here. Now, chapter 1736, another negative imperative. Pursue not that for which you uh, have no uh, 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 knowledge. Pursue. What is the word pursue? It means to follow in order to catch up with and seize. To follow in something in order to catch up with it 
and, and take hold of it. So Allah said, don't pursue uh, the word takfu, the, the takfu. Don't pursue that of which I have no knowledge. Surely the hearing, the sight, and the heart, uh, the fuad, your intellect, of oh, all these it will be asked. You'll be inquired about that. So don't do that. Excuse me. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's so easy, but yet you want to do it anyway. You want to go looking, well, brother, you know, how do you make the law? Well, they say over here, this is what you do. You make two rakat. No, you don't make no rakat. Uh, you make sajjah. No, you don't. No, you make a, 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 how many you stand? How many? Three. No, it says five. No, this, that. Everybody have different foolishness pursuing something that they have no knowledge. Allah says what? Leave it alone. Allah says, leave it alone. He says, yeah, but I don't want to. I don't want to leave it alone. Why can't I? Like a little child stomping your feet. Why can't I play with it? Why can't I mess with it? Well, you let him touch it. He had it the other day. Why can't I? Like some little baby chump. When Allah said, leave it alone. Allah says, what? Pursue not that of which you have no knowledge. Don't, don't, don't do it. Because your hearing, your sight, and your intellect, I'm going to ask you about that. Why did you go running behind that? Did you see it in the Quran? No. So who told you to go follow it? Somewhere else. You didn't trust it. If I wanted you to know it, it would have been clear for you in the Quran. Or oh, maybe it's clear for the, in the Quran and you just didn't approach it with the right attitude and all that. So it didn't come to you, to your sight. But the other things that came to you and was clear, why didn't you just do them? It wasn't clear to you that you shouldn't associate nothing with me. Somehow or another, you thought that I should be having us associate. What gave you that thought? What gave you that thought? When you go to work, <clears throat> we ride to work on the same bus, on the same train. I get off, you go into the office. I go in the back and we work. And then the horn blow, the whistle blow, and I come up and the guy gives me my money and gives yours. You think I need to be taking part of your money? My brother, give me half of yours. I came here. We came to work together. You, what things you need, I, I'll give you half of my money. It's because we came to the same place. We work at the same place and all that. I got to give you half. What makes you think Allah needs you to pursue something he didn't tell you about? He needs somebody else to explain it to you. Where did you get that from? Leave that alone. Another one, chapter 20, verse 114. Supremely exalted is the law of the king, the truth. And make not haste with this Quran uh, before its revelation is made clear to you and say, my Lord, increase me in knowledge. Increase me in knowledge. Like Saul said, like Saul said in chapter 2, verse 247, Allah has chosen him above, uh, above you and has increased him abundantly in knowledge and physique. Allah increased him abundantly in knowledge and physique. And then Allah says in chapter 47, verse 17, whoever follow guidance, Allah will increase them in guidance. Increase me in that. Say that. Don't make haste, but say Allah increase me. Increase me. Say that. The negative imperatives. You don't want to do them. It's so easy to do what Allah told you not to do. But you want to do what he told you not to do, the negative things that he said. I mean, the things that he said, look, don't pursue that which you have no knowledge. You want to do it anyway. He said, don't take the alert men as out, out of and all that. You want to do it anyway. You just want to do silly season foolishness. And for me, I'd rather stand before Allah and say, yeah, oh, Allah, you told me not to do so and so. And if I couldn't understand it, if I didn't see it, a to Z in your book that's complete, fully detailed, and so forth, to leave it alone. And that's what I did. I didn't do none of it. So, Brother Hamza, do you make Salah in terms of this ritual Salah? No. Why? Because I don't see it spelt out in the Quran. So, Allah said, leave it alone. And that's what I do. What you want me to do, what you're talking about? Then, like I said before, you can go to hell. You can go to hell. Why? Because you disbelieve in the book. And that's why you, not careful, you can go to hell. That's what I mean. If you're not careful, you can 
go to hell. But in this case, I'm using like I would use it in the street. You can go to hell. That's a whole different kind of emphasis on going to hell. Can we receive wahi? Here's another point. Can we receive wahi? And if so, how? Second revelation, wahi. Can we receive a second revelation, wahi? And if so, how can it be done? How can it be done? If so, how? And for what purpose can we receive it? What purpose? Let's look. Chapter 41, verse 11 to 12. You want to read that, Shafiq? Chapter 41, verse 11 to 12. Then he directed himself to the heaven, and it was a vapor. So he said to it, and to the earth, come both willingly or unwillingly. They both said, we come willingly. So he ordained them seven heavens in two days, and revealed in every heaven its affair. And we adorned the lower heaven with lights, and made it to God. That is the decree of the mighty, the known. Allah ordained. Ordain, which is the word there, uhia. He revealed for it, the, whatever it said there, the two ways or whatever. I don't have it written. But the word is uhia. So the heavens and the earth received wahi. He personified it in uhia. He used the word uhia for them. So the heavens and the earth received wahi. Received wahi, the heavens and the earth. What about chapter 16, verse 88? 68 to 80, 69. Chapter 16, verse 68 to 69. The bees. The bees. To be or not to be. And thy Lord revealed to the bee. Mm. Make hives in the mountains and in the trees and in what they build. Then eat of all the fruits and walk in the ways of thy Lord submissively. There comes forth from their bellies a beverage of many hues in which there is a healing for men. Therein surely is a sign for people who reflect. Allah revealed to the bees, Uhia. Uhia. Allah revealed to the bees. The bees got wahi. The heaven and the earth got wahi. The bees got wahi. The same word, Uhia. What about 99.5? Then we rendered him the lowest of low. Oh, 99. And, and as if thy Lord had revealed to her. To her who? What's the verse before? On that day, she will tell her news. Talking about the She's earth. Talking right? about the earth. The earth, and right. Brings forth our burdens. It says, when the earth is shaking with the sh her shakening, and the earth brings forth her burdens, and man says, what has befallen her? On that day, she will tell her news, as if thy Lord had revealed to her. Oh, here. Oh, here. The earth will tell us news as if Allah had gave wahi to the earth. Oh, here. Oh, here. From the word wahi. Allah says he speaks to man, the humankind in three different ways. But here he's personifying uh, other in, in, uh, in, inanimate uh, uh, ob objects, uh, non-human uh, objects, the heaven, the earth, the bees, one thing after the other. He's using the word uhia. Now let's take a look here at uh, 28.7. 28.7. And we reveal to Moses... Moses' mother, saying, Give him suck. Then when thou fearest for him, cast him into the river, and fear not, nor grieve. Surely we will bring him back to thee, and make him one of the messengers. So we reveal to Moses' mother. What's the word? Alhaina. Alhaina from Wahid. From the word Wahid. 
from the word Wahid, Al Haina. Al Haina. You're going to see that word over there in chapter 42, verse 52. Now, let's take another look. Chapter 5, verse 111. Moses' mother got Wahi. The earth got Wahi. The bees got Wahi. The heaven and the earth got Wahi. What now in 511? 111. 111. And when I revealed to the disciples, oh. saying, believe in me and my message, mm -hmm. they said, we believe and bear witness that we submit. Look at that. Al Haina, from the word Wahi, to the disciples of Jesus, they got Wahi. They got Wahi. What about 12.3? Chapter 12, verse 3. We narrate to thee the best of narratives in that which we have revealed to thee, this Quran, though before this thou was of those unaware. Look at that. We, we al haina, we al haina from Wahid. This what? Quran. Before this Quran, you were unaware. You didn't know nothing. You were unaware. Gafi Loom. That's a term the law don't want to be having you associated with. You can just look at throughout the Quran and you'll see it's not a good word. But you was of that. You were of the Gafi Loom before this Quran. But we al haina, we revealed it to you. And that's where we said in chapter 42, verse 51 to 52. Now, Let's take a look at chapter 13, verse 30, 31. <clears throat> Can we receive Wahi other than, and I mean, if so, and then how? And thus we have sent thee among a nation before which other nations have passed away, that thou mightest recite to them what we have revealed to thee. And still they deny the beneficent, say, He is my Lord, there is no God but He, and to Him do I trust, and to Him is my return. No, you recite to them that which Al Haina, which Al Haina, why from Wahid, that we reveal to you. That's what you recite. Now look at the difference. All that other Al Haina and Wahi had nothing to do with reciting it to nobody, right? The bees weren't reciting nobody, nothing to nobody, were they? Were the heaven and earth to recite something to you? The disciples didn't recite nothing to nobody. They got Wahi. What about Moses' mother? Did she recite something to you? But no. The difference here now, difference here now is chapter 13, verse 30, that you recite that which is our Haina to you. Well, what was that? We, we said, look at now, chapter uh, 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 42, verse 51 to 52. Take a look at it real quick. 42, 51 and 52. Yeah. And it is not vouchsafed to a mortal that Allah should speak to him except by revelation or from behind a veil or by sending messengers and revealing by his permission what he pleases. Surely is Surely he is high, wise. And thus did we reveal to thee an inspired book. And thus did we al haina to you an inspired book. That's what you now are to recite to the people. Nobody else is recite nothing. So that recital that you had as a, as a revelation is only the inspired book. It's not some second revelation because any second revelation is not to be recited to nobody. We're going to continue on with this and see. There's a big difference. If the prophet got a revelation other than the Quran, he was not commanded to recite it to nobody. The only one to be recited to the people was the Quran. Was the Quran. Everybody else, every Tom, Dick, and Harry could receive Wahi, Uhiya, and they weren't commanded to recite that to nobody. It was for whatever edification it gave to them. Whatever it benefited them, that's what it was used for. The bees ain't reciting nothing to nobody. 
chapter 17, verse 73. What does it say? It says, 17, 73. It says, and surely they had proposed to turn thee away from that which we had revealed to thee. Look, for that was we, our hyena. They wanted to turn you away from that. That was the end of it. That thou shouldest forge against us other than that. Al-Lakwal Hadith. And then they would have taken thee for a friend. Right. So now wherever you see forge, something forge, normally it's hadith. Take a look, for example, in chapter 12, verse 111. What does it say? 12, 111. It, it says, in their histories, in their histories, in their histories, there is certainly a lesson for, of men of un, for men of understanding. It is not a narrative which they could be forged, but of a verification of what is before it, and a distinct explanation of all things, mm. and a God, and a mercy mm. for people who believe. This is not a hadith that could be forged. It's not a hadith that could be forged. So they wanted to take away from you, they wanted to turn you away from that which is al Haina to you, which is the Quran, so that you might forge something other than that, uh, and then they would have taken you for a friend, some hadith. The, the Lachwal Hadith that will lead people away. So the only the, uh, revelation to be recited was the Quran. Chapter 17, verse 85 to 97. And they asked thee about the, the revelation. Say, the revelation is by thy commandment of the, my Lord, and of knowledge you are given but a little. And if we had pleased, we could certainly take away that which we revealed to thee. We could take away that which we our hyena to you. We could take that away. And then what? From thee. And that which we have revealed to thee. Then thou wouldest find none to plead thy cause against us. But it is a mercy for, from th thy Lord. Surely his bounty to thee is abundant. Exactly. Say, if the men and jinn were to combine together to bring the like of this Quran, mm. they could not bring the like of it, though some of them were aiders of others. Mm. And certainly we have made clear for men in this Quran every kind of description. But most men Consent not save denying. Mm, look at that. Al Haina again. Let's say finally 42, verse 7 to 13. Verses 7, 7 and 13. 42, verse 7 and verse 13. And thus we have revealed to thee, Al Haina, an Arabic Quran that thou mayest warn the mother town and those around it, and give warning of the day of gathering. Wherein there is no doubt a party will be in the garden mm. and a, another party in the burning fire. Mm. 13. He has made plain to you the deen which he enjoined upon Noah mm. and which he has revealed to thee uh -huh. and which he enjoined on Abraham and Moses and Jesus mm. to establish the deen and be not divided therein. Hard for the mushriks is that to which thou callest them. Mm -hmm. Who chooses for himself whom he pleases, and guides to himself who turns to him. Look at that. Al Haina. Hard is this Al Haina what's been revealed to you, this Quran alone on the Mushri King, what you invited them to. It's hard on them. It's hard on them. It's hard on them. So the point here now is that if the prophet or anyone receives any revelation outside of the Quran is not to be recited. They have not been commanded to recite it to no one. It's for their own benefit, their own enlightenment, some inspiration for them. Everybody gets it. Everybody gets it. Believer, non-believer, in a dream, in an intuition, uh, inspiration, whatever they get, that's that. You haven't been commanded to recite it. 
The only revelation commanded to recite is the one that has been sent down and reveal the Quran. Recite that. That's what it is. So let's leave that and move on to something else. Let's move on to something else. I'm going to skip this one. I had this for somebody special, but I'll leave it. <laughs> All right, let's look at another question. This is a little bit off offbeat, but we get this. And so we want to uh, talk about how to address this issue. Because a lot of times, you know, and we've been called to be dais and to... Uh, make ourselves a party who invite to the way of Allah and so forth and so on. We've been told to warn those who say Allah has begotten the son and so forth and so on about our Christian neighbors, brothers, sisters, and friends. So we've been asking questions like, is Jesus God? Is Jesus God? I'm saying, let's ask a different question. Let's ask, is Jesus the father? Is Jesus the Father? You see, rather than ask, is Jesus God? Let's try that approach. Excuse me, Bishop, Reverend, uh, Dr. So-and-so, Deacon. Is Jesus the Father? Not ask him, is he God? See, they're going to say, yeah, he's God. He's got one being with three persons. He's one being with three persons. I said, well, what about now? Is he the father? Let's take a look. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 4 to 7. I'll read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 44 to 7. 4 to 7. Paul says there reportedly, but for us there's one God. But for us there's one God. Who? The Father. The Father. For us, there's only one God. The Father. That means one person. One person is God who? The Father, one person. Not one God, one being with three persons. There's one God with one person. The Father, of whom all things, and we in him, and, and, and we in him. And one Lord, Jesus Christ, by whom all things, and we by him. How be it, verse 7, there's not every man that has this knowledge. Paul said everybody, everybody don't have this knowledge. They don't know that the one God is the Father. That the one God is the Father. He's one person. Paul ain't never been taught no Trinity. He was a Pharisaic Jew according to what they tell us in their writings, in their scriptures. He was a Pharisee. And uh, they never, you know, Jews never taught anything about some Trinity. He didn't know nothing about that. He said, for us, there's but one God. That's the father. So when I debated Dr. James White, he said, Mr. Malik has just proven that Jesus is not the father. Jesus is not the father. Right. Because there's only one father, and that is God. The father is God. For, there, for us, there's but one God who the father. Jesus is not the father. Now, John chapter 20, verse 17. Jesus, is, is Jesus the Father? That's the question. John chapter 20, verse 17. Jesus said unto her, Mary Magdalene, Touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my Father, but go unto my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, to my God and your God, to my God and your God. Notice Malachi chapter 2, verse 10. Have we not all one Father? Has not one God created us all? So, is Jesus the Father? No. Jesus is not the Father. Only God is the Father. Only the Father is God. The Lord's Prayer. In Luke chapter 11, verses 1 to 4. You're going to find it again in Matthew chapter 5, verse 5 to 15. After this manner, therefore pray ye, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name, our Father who is in heaven, not me. 
It's our Father. Only the Father is God. He's in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Forgiveness is conditional. Verse 14. For if you forgive them, men not their trespasses, your trespasses, your heavenly Father will not also forgive you. But if you forgive them uh, their trespasses, if you forgive them not, neither will the Father forgive you. In other words, if you forgive men their trespasses, your Father, your heavenly Father, will forgive you. That's conditional. How do you get forgiveness? It's conditional. Nobody died for your sins. Nobody died for your sins. Forgiveness is conditional. What? In the Lord's Prayer. You said the Lord's Prayer. Lord meaning uh, rabbi, teacher. And this is the prayer you're saying that he's noted for. And so this is what he said. After this manner, you pray. Because they said, uh, Master, teach us to pray the way John taught his disciples. So he said, after this manner, this is how you pray. After this manner. Our Father, which art in heaven. Not our Father right here. Our Father, yours and mine. That's the way I pray. Hallowed be thy name. And if you want to be forgiven by God, it's conditional. If you don't do this, you don't get forgiven. If you do this, you get forgiven. Forgiven. What? Verse 14. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive you your trespasses. Simple as that. Ain't nobody died for your sins. It's in the Lord's Prayer. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21 to 23. Is Jesus the Father? This is what we started with. Is Jesus the Father? Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven, my Father, which is in heaven, doing his will. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not cast out demons, did one of them with wonderful works, and one thing after the other? 23. Then will I profess unto them, I what? Never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. We've been over that many times. So we know that Jesus is not uh, the Father, and only the Father is God. So, who was Jesus? That's the next question. Who was Jesus? Uh, chapter 5, verse 72. Chapter 5, verse 72. Certainly they disbelieve who say, Allah is the Messiah, son of Mary. And the Messiah said, O children of Israel, serve Allah, my Lord, and your Lord. You're going to find that in John chapter 20, verse 17, Luke chapter 2, verse 22, and Acts chapter 2, verse 36. You can look them up later. Chapter 5, verse 75, the Messiah, son of Mary, was only a messenger. Messengers before him have indeed passed away. And his mother was a truthful woman. They both used to eat food. See how we make the message clear for them? Then behold how they are turned away. Proven from the scripture that Jesus was the Christ. This is another point. Now we said that they, his mother was a truthful woman. They both used to eat food. They used to eat food. That means they, they don't eat food now, so they're passed away. They're dead. If they're alive, if Jesus is alive somewhere and his mother's alive somewhere, then they're still eating food. But the loss of what? They used to eat food. They don't eat no food no more because they're dead. Well, that's another argument. We can take that to the max and max that out. Now, now we want to prove from the scriptures like some one of the... Uh, dignitaries in the uh, New Testament, as it's called, he went into the synagogues and he proved from the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ. He didn't prove from the scriptures that Jesus was God. He didn't prove from the scriptures that Jesus was literally the Son of God. He proved from the scriptures that Jesus was the Messiah, the Messiah, the same as the Quran says. Let's take a look. Acts chapter 18, verse 24 to 28. Acts chapter 18, verse 24 to 28. Uh, I didn't have that written out. Anybody have a Bible? Can read it real quick? 
If not, I can just note it. We can move on, maybe for the second time. For the second time, I'll note these uh, points. Look at them later. G this guy proved from the scripture that Jesus was the God, was uh, was the was the Christ. Acts chapter 8, 18, verse 24 to 28. Let's take a look at Jesus when he talked to the Samaritan woman. And she told him something to the effect that I know that when the Messiah comes, he's going to do so and so. And Jesus said, I am he. I'm the one who you're talking about. I'm the Messiah. That's in John chapter 4, verse 1 to 34. Read it later. Jesus and his disciples, when Jesus asked Peter, who do men say that I am? And Jesus said to them, uh, they told him that you are so-and-so and whoever you are. And when Peter answered, uh, Jesus said, blessed are thou, thou uh, Simon Barjona, for what you said, flesh and blood didn't tell you that, but my father in heaven, he's the one told you to give that right answer. And Jesus said, don't tell nobody that I am the Christ. Don't tell nobody I am the Christ. You're going to see that in uh, Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 and 20. In Acts chapter 2, verse 36, we're going to see that how Jesus got to be Christ. It says, God, God, God made Jesus both two things, Lord and Christ. He made them both Lord and Christ. God did that. And First Timothy chapter, Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, it talks about the man Christ Jesus. The man Christ Jesus, anthropo. In Acts chapter 2, verse 22, James, the alleged brother of Jesus, he gave his final sermon, sermon, and he said, Ye men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, a man approved of God by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as you yourself already know. Jesus was a man approved, appointed by God. The Son of God, Son of the God the Son. John chapter 10, verse 22 to 36. Read that later. The seed of David. He was born of the seed of David according to the flesh. Romans chapter 1, verse 3 to 4, 2 Timothy 2 to 8. Uh, we have a somewhat of a contradiction about Jesus in uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 55, verses Mark chapter 6, verse 3. One say, is that not the carpenter's son? And one says, is not that the carpenter? Was it, was it the carpenter's son or the carpenter? Well, you figured that one out. Son of my mother. Because they said, well, why do uh, Muslims might say, well, why is Jesus called Ibn Maryam, the son of Mary? Well, that was used quite often in Jewish uh, language, slang language or whatever they were doing. It says in, in Quran chapter 7, verse 150. What does that say? 7, 150. Quran 7, 150. And when Moses returned to his people, Raphael grieved, he said, evil is, is that which you have done after me. Did you hasten on the judgment of your Lord? And he threw down the tablets and seized his brother by the head, dragging him towards him. He said, son of my mother, the people reckoned me weak and had well nigh slain me. So make not the enemies to rejoice over me and count me not among the unjust people. Look at that. That's Moses and Aaron, supposedly, or whomever it might have been. But the person said, Oh, son of my mother. Was that a virgin birth uh, person he's talking about? He had a father, but yet he was referred to as son of my mother. So that was used. To, that language was used. It wasn't nothing, no problem with that. So if you have a make an issue, uh, Jesus Ibn Maryam, son of Mary, then make an issue out of this and see who this person was without a father. And, uh, you know, uh, was he incarnated and in, uh, the virgin birth and all that too? Make that issue. Otherwise, be quiet. Because actually, we can argue this point out for you very thoroughly, but I'm just saying, putting that on the table for you to have something to talk about or think about before you open your mouth and get caught out there. Before you open your mouth and get caught out there. Don't do that. This is like <laughs> a caution for you. It's being, I'm being nice. First, if you want to see the son of my mother stuff again, First Samuel chapter 26, verse 6. You're going to see son of my mother. Second Samuel chapter 2, verse 13. You're going to see son of my mother. 
sons of Rachel. Genesis chapter 35, verse 24. Sons of Rachel. Did Rachel have a husband? Sons of Rachel. How many virgin births she had? Sons of Rachel. Oh, here's a big one. Slave. Now I have to I have to kind of chill on this one for a minute because this gets under my skin a little bit. Now I had to deal with this before. I got a video on YouTube why it says why I choose to remain a slave. Remain. I didn't say why I choose to be a slave. I said why I choose to remain one because I believe that I was created as a slave. A slave of Allah, not a slave to humanity, a slave of Allah. And as such, a slave of Allah, I'm not a slave in that I gave, gave up my uh, ability to be rational and intellectual and reason to reason things out. No, I gave up my will to disobey Allah. I have a will to accept and reject. I have a free will, will to choose. I chose not to disobey Allah. I chose not to be a servant because I could choose to be a servant. And as a servant, I can choose to serve or not to serve. But as a slave, I must serve. So I chose to must serve my Lord. But I have to be rational and thinking also because he's going to ask me, didn't I give you here insight and intellect? I'm going to question you about that. I don't care because you was a slave. If you was a slave and I told you to go after false gods and all that, you wouldn't do that, would you? No, I wouldn't do that. So I'm going to be reasonable as a slave. But look, I have to call this out. I had to deal with a person. I won't mention them before again. But this this person, I don't have any beef with him. I don't know him. He's the person who does this uh, YouTube. And I maybe I shouldn't do it, but I'm going to do it because eh, I'm a little touchy about it. A little touchy about it. I mean him no harm. I, as a matter of fact, I respect highly this person. I support what he does. But on this issue, I think he's wrong. And I have all right to point it out. And then we'll see what it is. We'll see how it falls. This is the brother Quran inspired me. Now, he did a talk on uh, Dua. And on the Dua talk, he mentioned at the beginning, I don't know how he got, got caught up with dua, but he put that in at the outset of his talk. You should not be calling yourself a slave. That's what he said. Now, like I said, I got nothing to do with the brothers, not a personal attack on them. I'm just up, upholding my position from the Quran that I said, yes, I should be called a slave. And not only me, you as well. And everyone that Allah created are slaves, slaves, S-L-A-V-E-S, slaves, not servants, simply. You can choose to be a servant if you want, but you are to be a slave. You were designed to be a slave. Now, let me just walk you through what I have here, and then I hope I don't have to deal with this again. And if I do, I probably won't. I'll let this stand and leave it now. You know, whatever. People may be touchy about that. I'm touchy just in the opposite way. I believe that I should be a slave to my Lord who gave me everything and can take everything away from me. And he gave me free will to disobey him. And I chose not to. I chose to remain under his auspices as a slave, you see? So now let's start it off. 19, chapter 19, verse 93. Somebody want to read that? Chapter 19, verse 93. This is none. There is none in yeah. the heavens and earth, but comes to beneficent as a, as a servant. As a servant, it says. Yes. As a servant. I say as a slave. As a slave. Now, if you look in the corpus, I don't really care about the corpus, but if you do look at it, it says a slave. Right. Slave. Right. Yeah. So now... Now, now there was a debate recently uh, with a couple of bro Muslim brothers and a couple of Christians, and one of those Christian brothers, uh, he said that 
he quoted this verse. There's none uh, uh, in the heavens and the earth, but must must come to uh, uh, the beneficent, except as a slave. And someone corrected that speech in their view, and they said servant, meaning that he was wrong. I said no, he was right. Slave. Everybody got to come before law as a slave. So let's take a look at it and see. Uh, for the word slave, it's going to be used clearly that we can see it in chapter 4, verse 172. 4, 172, what does it say? The Messiah disdains not to be a slave of Allah, nor do the angels who are near to him. And whoever disdains his service and is proud, he will gather them all together to himself. Then as for those who believe and do good, he will pay them fully their reward and give them more out of his grace. And as for those who disdain and are proud, he will chastise them with a painful chastisement. And they will find for themselves, besides Allah, no friend, no helper. That's up to 73, right? Good. So now, when we read chapter 19, verse 93, it says, there are none... There is none, the word is kulun, kulun, everybody rather, in the heavens and the earth, except Allah, they come to the beneficent as a abdan, 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 as an abdan. And we say in sl slave, not a servant, slave. Now, in verse 4, 172, it says the Messiah disdains not. He never will disdain to what? To be an abdan, the same word, abdan, a slave for Allah. Nor do the angels, the angels are slaves for Allah, who are near to him, who are near to him. We know that the angels got no choice. The angels have no choice. They don't have freedom of choice. So they don't have the freedom to say, oh, I can be a servant or a slave. They are slaves. They do as they're told. They do as they're told, right? That's what a slave does. You have no choice. So the angel, so the Messiah disdains not to do the same thing. And whoever disdains his service, Ibadah, Ibadah, his service, and, and, and is proud, he will gather them together on the day uh, to himself. Now, let's take a look further. Who was Job? Who was Job? In chapter 2, verse 178, what does it say? Who was he? 2178. For you who believe, retaliation is prescribed for you in the matter of the slain, the free for the free and the slave for the slave. Um, and, go ahead. And the female for the female. But if remission is made to one by his agreed brother, persecution for blood money should be accord according to usage and the payment to him in a good manner. This is an alleviation from your Lord and a mercy. Whoever exceeds the limit after this will be will have a painful chastisement. Well, good. So now this is a very, very, very powerful verse because we don't disagree. Nobody who reads the Quran on the planet Earth, who reads the Quran, will disagree that this word in here means slave. It means slave. Oh, you believe retaliation. Retaliation is prescribed for you in the matter of the slain. In the matter of the slain. The free for the free. And the slave, Al-Abdu, Al Al-Abdu, the slave for the slave, Al-Abdu, this is used twice, Al-Abdu, the slave. Nobody disagrees about that. Nobody disagrees about that. that. That word is slave, slave. So let's look at Job and see, was he a slave, Job? Chapter 38, verse 44, what does it say? It 
38-44. Was Job a slave? Should he have called himself? Did Allah call him a slave? Not should you call yourself a slave. Did Allah call Job a slave? And take in thy hand few worldly goods and earn goodness therewith and incline not to falsehood. Surely we found him patient, most excellent a slave. Surely excellent the slave. The slave. Surely he turned, ever turned to us. Look, what is the word? Allah Abdu. Allah Abdu. The same identical word used in 2 178 that everybody agrees is slave. The same word, <clears throat> identical, identical for Job. In 2, 178, oh, you believe retaliation is prescribed for you in the matter of the slain, the free for the free, and the slave, Al-Abdu, for the slave, Al-Abdu. Job, and take in hand through worldly goods and earn goodness therewith and incline not to falsehood. Surely we found him, we found him patient, most excellent, Al-Abdu, the slave, Al-Abdu. Surely he ever turned to us. El Abdu. Was Job a slave? According to Allah, Job was a slave. It's the same word. You think Allah got time to play around with words? You say slave here. You don't want to say slave here. That's what it was. But just in case, let's move on. Let's move on. Job was a slave. Allah called him that. Now, Anyone, anyone, let's talk about anyone. I'm calling this a trifecta, a trifecta. Let's look at it, 2432. What does 2432 say? Twenty four thirty two. And marry those among you who are single. And do those who are fit among your male slaves. Good. Let's stop right there. Marry those among you who are single and those who are fit among your male slaves. What is the Arabic word for male slaves? Ibadi. Kum. Ibadi. That's the word for slave. Ibadi. We just said Abdu over here. El Abdu. Slave in 2, 178. El Abdu. Slave, nobody disagrees, 2432, Ibadi, slave, your male slaves. Now, let's take a look at 3953. 3953, what does it say? Oh, my slaves. Uh-uh, look at that. For my slaves who have been prosecuted regarding their souls to spare not of the mercy of Allah, surely Allah forgives sins altogether. He is indeed forgiving the merciful. Look at that. Oh, my slaves. Yeah, yeah, what? Ibadi. Ibadi. The same word used for male slaves up here. Ibadi. Ibadi. Among your male slaves. Ibadi kum. Now Allah says, Oh my Ibadi, my slaves, is the same one who has been prodigal, prodigal, prodigal against, uh, immoderate rather, uh, regarding your own soul. Don't despair of the mercy of Allah. Surely Allah pardons, forgives sins altogether. He is indeed forgiven, merciful. Now take a look at 25, uh, 35, verse 28. 35.28 says what? Now we know in 24.32 and in 2.178, that's literal slaves. Yet Job was used for the same word. And now anyone, Allah said, oh, my ibadi, my slaves. That's the same word that was used when it said, and marry among your male slaves. We know that that's slaves. We don't have no problem with slaves. So law is calling people slaves. If you don't want to call yourself a slave, that's your business. That's your business. Me, I choose to remain what Allah called me, a slave. 
I choose to remain that. You don't have to. You can call yourself a servant, and then you can let Shaitan whisper to you, and then you disobey Allah because you're free to do that. Shaitan can whisper to me, I can disobey if I want, but I'm not free to do it. I'm a slave, and I should, I should be locked down. If I do it, I'm doing it on a different label. I'm like a runaway slave. I'm a slave. And they catch me, say, you're a slave. But you work in the house and in the yard and all that. You can walk off and you got liberties, go in town, come back and buy stuff, and just hang out and do whatever you want. You have a little different kind of thing going on. You know what Malcolm said about that. I don't have to repeat it. You know what Malcolm said. There's people in the house and there's people in the field. You see? So I'm one in the field. <laughs> so what does 3528 say? Of men and beasts and cattle, there are various colors likewise. Those of his slaves, only who are possessed of knowledge, fear Allah. Surely Allah is mighty, forgiven. Look at that. Allah talks about the beasts and one thing after the other. But only the people who what? Ibadi. Ibadi, his slaves. Only the people who are his slaves, they do what? What do they do? Uh, uh, those, those of his slaves, only who are possessed of knowledge, fear law. They're possessed of knowledge, they fear law. They know that they're slaves, and they fear law. If you don't possess that knowledge, you're not, having, you're not certain about that, and you're a little shy and gun shy about, brother, I don't want to call myself a slave, you you know, the history of slaves, slaves, you know, in South Africa, they had slave, America, they had slave, over here, they had slave, 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 I don't want to be that, we're not talking, we're talking about slaves of the one who created your behind, I don't mean to any individual, I'm talking in general now, that slave, that's who you are, and they're not, they, they are, have knowledge, they know that they're slaves, and that's the case. Now, let's come full circle. Let's come full circle. 2517. 2517. What does it say? And on the day when he will gather them, and that which they serve besides the law, he will say, was it you who led astray these my slaves? Or did they themselves stray from the path? Look at that. That's on the day of judgment. And Allah is announcing you as a slave. What is the word? Ibadi. Ibadi. That's the same word, 2432, which we know means slave. Ibadi kum, your slaves. Well, that's the same word that when Allah talks about my slaves, all of y'all, my slaves who have been immoderate uh, uh, to yourself. Don't despair the mercy of Allah. Allah talks in 35, 28 about his slaves, the same word. That's the trifecta. Trifecta, three times it's used. And now he comes full circle back in paradise. You stand in there and he says, oh, my slaves, on the day when he will gather them and, to, uh, and, and that which they served, that which they served because they became servants and they served besides the law. They opted to be servants and they served besides the law, uh, and he will say, what is it that, uh, uh, what it, well, he will say, what it, it, was it you, these things that you serve, was it you that led astray, led astray what? My ibadi, my slaves, or did they themselves stray from the path? So there's the word slave again. What are you talking about? Why would you tell somebody, not to be a slave when the law calls you a slave. Answer these verses. Answer them. Look at them. They're on tape now. Did anybody look at them who want to support this issue, who want to see what it is, and be convinced or not convinced? I don't think I need to deal with this no more. I just think maybe sometimes, and I'll be frank with this here. When I said be frank, it's not like I'm not being frank uh, at, at times, but I just want to be out in the open now. Sometimes I feel that people are taking shots at me. And if you take a shot at me, you better be fully loaded and aim well. 
You better be fully loaded. Don't just have some little one or two rounds, you know, your last round or shooting blanks. And you better aim well, because if not, I'm gunning for you with cannons and hard weapons. You see, I'm coming with big time weapons. And so I think I got you here. Not think, I know I got you. I got you on this. So you better withdraw that top topic or leave it alone. Do what you please. I just don't want you messing with me with it. Now, let's take it a little further to show about the slaves, whether you be a slave willingly or unwillingly. Let's see. What did you what will do you have in this matter? So willingly or unwillingly. Willingly or unwillingly. Let's see what Allah says about what you do willingly and what you do, whether you will to do it or not. Because there's certain things you will do, whether you like it or not. You're gonna do it. That sounds like a slave to me. If you if I if I have to do it, whether I will to do it or not, then I'm in bondage. But I, there's certain things that I have a will not to do. But one, even with that will not to do, there's certain things I still don't have the will not to do. So I'm in partially a, a servant, but in the grand scheme of things, that's what we just presented. I'm a slave. So let's take a look. Chapter 2, verse 34. What does it say? In terms of Shujud, the angels. What does it say? 2.34. Said, and when we said to the angels, be submissive to Adam, they submitted, but Iblis did not. He refused and was proud and was one of the disbelievers. No. So when we said, as you do, submit, Iblis did not do that. We said it to the Malaika, submit, and Iblis didn't. He was proud and he was one of the disbelievers. He was proud. He didn't do it. He didn't do the sujud. Chapter 13, verse 15. What does it say? 13, verse 15. Said, and whoever is in the heavens and the earth makes obedient to a law only, willingly or unwillingly, and their shadows do too. At morning, and evening. So everything in the heavens and earth, yes, you do. That's doing, that means now. They're doing it right now. They're doing it right now. And that's the present. They're doing it right now. Willingly or unwillingly. And even their shadows. Even their shadows. What are you talking about? You can't prevent your shadow from doing the sujud. Whatever sujud is. We're not arguing that case right now. But willingly or unwillingly, the word sujud, sujud. Now, let's take a look at chapter 22, verse 18. Twenty-two eighteen says, Seest thou not that to a law makes submission whatever is in the heavens and the earth, and the sun and the moon and the stars, and the mountains and trees, and the animals, and many of people, and many there are to whom chastisement is due. And he whom Allah bases, none can give him honor. Surely Allah does what he pleases. No. So Allah names them animals and elements or whatever it is that do, do sujood. And he says, what? Many of the people. Because some people decide, I'm not going to do. They're going to do like uh, Iblis. They're following Iblis. Iblis said, I'm not doing no usuju. So some people follow the mindset and the disposition of Iblis, and they're not doing no usuju. Whatever usuju is, that's not the issue. But many of them don't, but others do. Now let's take a look, and maybe we'll get a little hint about usuju in chapter 84, verse 21. 84, 21. Maybe we get a little hint there. Something to begin working with. And when the Quran is recited to them, mm, look at they that. Adore him not. Yeah, they they don't what? They don't do the sujud. When the Quran is recited to them, they don't do the sujud. You see? Many of them do, and there's some that don't. They don't do the sujud. When the Quran 
is being recited to them. Now, chapter 41, verse 11. Then he directed himself to the heaven, and it was a vapor. So he said to it and to the earth, come both willingly or unwillingly. And they both said, we come willingly. There we go. So personified the heaven and the earth. They, Allah says, come together willingly or unwillingly, as if they had a choice. He made them like people, pers persons, and they have a choice. They said, we come willingly. We come willingly. So Allah says everything subdued to him willingly or unwillingly. In the final analysis, willingly or unwillingly. However, during the process of life, there's some who choose not to. You have a free choice. You choose not to. That's subdued. Let's look at the word salam. Salam. Salama. Chapter 2, verse 131. Let's see how this makes you a slave because we're talking willingly or unwillingly. Chapter 2, verse 131, what does it say? When his Lord said to him, submit, he said, I submit myself to the Lord of the world. Aslam. He told him to Aslam. He said, Aslam too. When Allah said, Salam, Aslam, he submitted himself to the Lord of the world for that purpose. Chapter 3, verse 82. What does it say? 382. Whoever then turns back after this, these are the transgressors. 83. 83. Seek thee then other than Allah's deen, and to him submits whoever is in the heavens and the earth, willingly or unwillingly. To him... They will be returned. Look at that. So we got them going and coming. We got them with sujud. Everything in the heavens and earth does the sujud, willingly or unwillingly. That sounds like a slave to me. What about Islam? Salam. It says right here, they seek other than the deen of Islam of Allah, deen of law, and to him, Aslama, Aslama, whoever is in the heavens and the earth, willingly or unwillingly, and to him you will be returned. To him you will be returned. Now, the only place where Allah has commanded submission is to mankind. Allah has not commanded submission to the heavens and the earth. He's commanded submission to mankind, but everything in the heaven and the earth does it. But he commanded man, Abraham, Aslam, to submit, to become submitter, what is translated as Muslim. Now, chapter uh, 16, verse 87. The context is 86 to 90. But what does 87 say? 1687 says, and they will render... They will render submission to Allah on that day, and what they used to forge will fail them. So Allah talks about the day of judgment and all that, and whoever didn't submit in this life when he said, on that day you will be submitting. You will, on that day, as, as salama, you will submit on that day. You see? That shows that you will do it willingly or unwillingly, because on that day, whether you didn't like it or not when you was in the earth, you didn't do it, you will do it then. Chapter 15, verse 2. What does it say? Chapter 15, verse 2. Often will those who disbelieve wish that they were Muslim. Often will those who the kafirun, the kafirs, wish that they were Muslims, submitting ones, they'll wish that they had submitted. They'll wish that they had, you see? They'll wish that they had. So we see that we define the word uh, slave. We showed who were slaves based on the definition 
that we clearly understood in two places meant slaves, and we showed other people carrying that same definition, the same identical word, that they were slaves, that they were slaves. And we showed that his situations where people submit or do subdued willingly or unwillingly. Now, it's best for you to just go ahead and do it willingly, but if not, you will do it will, uh, unwillingly regardless. You will not defeat a law's purpose. Uh, Brother Edmund, should we take a break here? Okay, we'll take a break and we'll consider this part two.